Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm a little nervous at the same time. I'm very confident in sharing this message I have with you today. I've had a very powerful experience, and I'm going to read what I've written about this experience. And for those of you who know me personally, I don't want my personal life or my foibles as a human to any way uh, detract from this message that I've been asked to share. I'm not religious in a secular sense. At the same time, um, I'm a very spiritual person and I've had some amazing experiences in my life. This particular video is a preparation and a pre-video to a very important announcement and um, something that I'm just going to share. And I'm going to give a little history of who I am in this message. Many people know me, but I'm expecting and I'm hoping that this information will be transferred far and wide to the planet. I've been asked uh, to state more clearly my position. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to share the screen now. Um, and share this message. Okay, I'm going to ask you to bear with me while I uh, share this uh, a video. Okay, uh, for those of you who know me, I have a Mount Shasta Summer Conference, and I have uh, this radio show and blog is the Victory of the Light radio show. And I'm just going to have to... Um, go forward through a couple uh, things here. And I'm going to um, tell you my story that happened to me. And I'm just going to read this and let my words speak for themselves. I'm going to ask you to listen with an open mind and an open heart. Something happened to me recently. Um, I'm going to share that with you. My name is Robert Potter. I have been a face-to-face -face contactee of the Pleiadians and the Venusians since 1975. Just recently, on my birthday, Easter Sunday, March 31st, 2024, every seven years, my birthday falls on Easter. I was born at 2.20 a.m. I was awakened at 2 a.m. by a potent spiritual force. Now, to be sure, as a contactee, I'm familiar with such late-night telepathic contacts. This awakening, however, was very different than the usual contacts and that it was coupled with an intense spiritual presence or light that encompassed my entire body. I instinctively began a powerful invocation of light using a meditation technique known as the science of the still breath or Kriya Yoga as taught to me by a Mahavatar, an Indian saint named Babaji. He is a powerful master who taught me this technique in 1978. As I was in this invocation, a powerful healing energy coursed through my body as I was praised, praising God and was in direct communion with the Creator. While my eyes were focused looking into the top of my head with my awareness focused in the pineal gland, as instructed by my teacher, Babaji, I heard a voice loud and clear and said, Rob, you need to step into your power as a messenger for the angel force. The voice said, you need to rethink how you've been presenting the information you have been tasked to share. I will ask you to now declare your powerfully with more confidence what you already know, but have been hesitant to state publicly. He said, there is no more time to hesitate or to wait. My spirit has been pouring out upon your flesh, all flesh. In your heart, you know this, and you further know that things are going to ramp up in the public's awareness. You have been prepared your entire life, and it's time for the important information to be heard by the faithful. It is time to speak now. 
I've never had an, an interactive exchange like this before um, exactly, but I have had Venusians guide me and speak to me about various things and uh, operations in the past. In fact, my entire life, I've had various what some people call downloads of interaction. Uh, being a face-to-face -face contactee, being teleported, a mothership, and having numerous physical encounters with over 20 or 30 extraterrestrials in my life. It's very different uh, on this occasion. Uh, most of these telepathic communications and downloads have been private lessons, which I have incorporated into my ministry with my students and my teachings. This time was so different and so powerful I said, who are you? The voice said, I am that I am. I am what I am becoming and what I will be. I did not doubt I was talking to God as I've spoken to him my whole life. But this time he initiated the conversation and was literally answering my questions. I said, what do you want them to say? He said, tell them about me. And they said, how can I tell them about you? The unknowable infinite creator within all form yet transcendent and beyond all comprehension in all time and space and all dimensions and every particle of all that is, was, and ever will be. He said, you know, your dialogues with my angels have led you to the truth. You have done well and written the introduction to the gospel of Thomas and know me as the creator's son and the father and I are one. You know this to be true. This is what I want you to do. I want you to announce your officially designation representative of the galactic confederation of light and um i better go back there remove this little thing here i want you to she share each and every message that has been entrusted to you and to share them as is you are to play these messages in the recorded form except those with Commander Reigns, I'm sorry, uh, for reasons you're not to delineate. However, those who wish can purchase this video version. You can explain this to them, and this will help you personally, though we know you not do this for money. I'm not allowed to share uh, certain of the recorded messages, um, which I, I'm not allowed to say, but they simply don't want me to. You do not need to buy the video recorded messages if you want. But if you join my inner circle, you can see these. The reason being that they feel that the people that are hostile to the information would not pay any money to actually see this and to uh, trash my message, and trash the sacred information that I'm sharing. So that's what's going on there. I am to play these messages only and let these messages stand alone. I'm going to disable comments. And uh, he said to trust that I will go guide those with ears to hear these important messages. I'm allowed to do, he suggested I do other videos separate from this to add uh, my comments and to let the audience know how I receive these messages and the backstory behind each message. He has assured me that I have grown more assured and patient. And he said he knows I will not let him down. I'm never to defend the truth or to argue with anyone about these message. And I have suffered personally um, sharing what I already know. But this time, I'm going to lay them all out. And I'm going to let you all decide. For those of you faithful and spiritual people. Um, so um, I was instructed on various lessons, which I will share in the future as I go through each of these lessons and the, the pre-interviews. And um, I'm going to educate people on, let me say, more political aspects of the creator's transformation of this world. The transformation of this world, I'm just going to say, is more spiritual and has to do with the orientation of the individual and the intent of one's heart to come closer to God. There are tremendous changes coming, ladies and gentlemen. 
not only physically, but vibrationally and our societal infrastructure. The entire world as we know it has been filled with lies and corruption. I'm not going to go too deep into that. This is a preamble to the actual first message, the first recorded message ever given by an extraterrestrial to the people of Earth to me on December, on, uh, I'm sorry, on um, uh, October, on October uh, 19th. 2019, uh, exactly 67 years after the first contact in the desert by George Adamski at Desert Center. This was a contact with a Venusian named Orthon, who is now the Queen of Venus. He told Adamski through a translator that he, uh, he could see she was a woman, and he said, tell your people that I am a man, because we do not feel that your people can understand that at this time. So he's asked me to support and help the ignorant humanity to understand the truths I've struggled and learned to be of service for to my fellow man my whole life. He said, it's now time to put it all together the best that I can and to help those through these difficult days ahead. Brothers and sisters, we are about to enter tribulation period that will last seven years. I do not know exactly when it will start, but it will start soon. And within the next 10 years, the earth are going to go through some very challenging times. As the queen says in one of her messages you will hear later, it will be a real roller coaster ride. I implore you all to look to God, to seek truth within your heart, with every ounce of strength within your soul. Please following, please Try to follow the example of the life lived by the highest possible incarnation of any being in the third dimension in this galaxy. The one we know as the living word of God, the incarnation of one we now call Jesus the Christ. I'm not going to argue with people, but I want you to understand that. I will now share a little bit uh, about the Venusians I have met and share the backstory of my personal relationship with these angels as we are wont to call them i'm gonna now in the preamble to the interview that i'm going to play um this interview was taken on camera um i was drove back east to a place in west virginia where my friend dr raymond keller who lived on venus for two and a half months so I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to tell a little bit more. With the help of Dr. Raymond Andrew Keller II, um, I sent eight questions to the Venusian Queen, Lady Orda. They are matriarchal society, by the way, uh, based on lifetimes of service, not on genetic eliteness like the Earth people. These questions were Eight of these questions were answered in an interview by a messenger from the Queen at an undisclosed location in the eastern United States on November 20th. I'm sorry, it was November 2019. The Venusian being a matriarchal society and our, the highest manifestation of love in the solar system and the guardian of this planet and the representative member to the Galactic Confederation of Light, comprised of 601 worlds and 51 solar systems, have various leaders. One of them is the Queen of Venus. There is a royal court, and the region of Venus is an ascended master named Lord Dismas. He is known in some circles as the ascended master on Moria or the accidental apostle. He was the one crucified with Christ on the cross, known as the good thief. Christ said, you will be with me this day in paradise. And they both ascended to the heavenly father and became um, very special ascended masters in service to the earth. Now the moon-based clarion commander, um, along with Alon, the security chief, a very famous person I'll reveal later in my talks, um, has been in service to the earth for at least 300 years. Now, the queen 
and the Venusians allowed the interview to be recorded, recorded in video form in what is now the first official contact to the people of Earth in recent history. This was done in support of the efforts of Dr. Keller and myself to share the reality of the Venusians. This long-awaited message is confirming our friends from Venus are real and that they have good intentions toward all mankind. Their love for us and all their support for the dissemination of truth directly to the people. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in uh, contact. Here's a picture of Raymond and I, Raymond Mount Shasta. Raymond Keller is a very special and gentle and kind soul. Um, he was taken to Venus. One of his teachers was one of my teachers, a very special contactee named Gabriel Green from the 50s, who I used to visit. And I had encounters with spaceships and Venusians, which is another story. And I met him through a friend of mine who actually be at my conference this summer, Frank Chile, who introduced me to him. And Raymond has been an open book. He's been more open with me than Dr. Fred Bell and even Dr. Frank Strange's. And um, he has more knowledge even than my great friend, Dr. Uh, Louis Martens, a very high level contactee who's had more experiences than me, not as many or as esoterically profound as Dr. Raymond Keller. Now, Raymond Keller is very humble. They call him the Venusian historian. His first incarnation was in the first century BC. He wrote the Aeneid about the founding of the Rome, and he was the scribe for the first Caesar. The Venusians have been involved throughout history on our Earth, and this is chronicled in Raymond Keller's Venus Rising series books. He has written now nine, 11 books. I think nine of them are published. Two more will be released, including his autobiography this year. Venus Rising is about the history of the second planet and how they have served the Earth throughout our history. The second book, Final Countdown, Rockets to Venus, exposes the lies of the government. This third book is about Raymond Keller's visit to Venus in 2012. The woman on the right was speaking to Raymond when he was about 18 years old. He traveled to Yucca Valley, California in 1972. She was posing as a Brazilian uh, UFO reporter. And this picture here is is when they were on Venus in 2013. And as the newly designated queen of Venus, she invited Raymond to stay up there. That's another story, but I'm giving you some very powerful esoteric information that you might want to consider. So um, these two women uh, are ascended masters from Venus. If you have a spiritual discerning eye, I think if you look at the countenance of these beautiful women and see the light of God in their eye, what I'm going to tell you might make sense to you. The woman on the left is known as Lady Columba. Her earth incarnation, most recent, was in 1902. She was born to goodly parents, and at the age of 27, she went to India in 1929 to serve in the Christian socialist movement to help the poor and the downtrodden and the Andhra Pradesh region of India. This is in the area known as Hardwar, near, near Lakshman Jula and Badranath, in the high, at the gateway of the, of the Ganges River, where it heads in all the way down through India. There she met the woman on the, the right, whose name is Lady Aurora. She was born in 1885, and she was serving with this woman in India. They were both serving God and helping the poor and the downtrodden. Now, the woman on the right, Lady Aurora, was serving in the East India Company sometime in her lifetime, probably before the 1900s, when when the British were exploring in India up into Tibet 
and trying to gain a foothold and and part of their expansionist colonialist efforts for domination and control. She was guiding one of the masters of the East India Company high in the Himalayas for two weeks. On the way back down, coming into from Badranath, coming down the hill into Lakshman Jula, they found a saint beggar on the side of the road who had a, a sore leg and was ill. Uh, she approached him as a leader of the pack. Everyone else was riding horses or donkeys or whatever. And, and she said, we must help this man. He said, you can give him some food and water, but we must continue. She pointed down the hill. That is, that is where we are going. You know this path. You were to go, you're going to go on your own. I need to take care of this man and nurse him back to health. And this pompous British potentiate said, if you do not go with me, you will not get paid. She took some food and enough water and they left her there. She did not get paid and she nursed him, this gentleman down the hill, this sadhu at the bottom of the hill after spending time with him and showing him infinite kindness and patience, he revealed that he was not sick at all. He stood up, his leg was healed, and he announced that he was an ascended master, and he dematerialized with her, and they appeared on Venus. She became a dual citizen. The woman on the left was a... Uh, she was a special envoy working in the 1950s in approximately her 50s as a secretary to some of the extraterrestrial contactees in Giant Rock, California. You see, the extraterrestrials became very interested, in, especially the Venusians, in serving the Earth at the advent of the nuclear bomb. And they picked up their surveillance and their interactions on Earth dramatically to help protect the earth, not only from itself, but some, some fallen beings. And that's another story. Raymond Keller was taken by the queen in 19, in 2012. He was in a bar in Wuxi, China, where he was teaching, teaching English. And uh, in walked the small Venusian that we see here on the right. And he's, he was in a bar called the Bee Bar, which is actually related to Venus. The Venusian native society is a form of bumblebee, a sentient consciousness. I don't want to go too far afield here, but I want to share with you the reality of my interaction with what some of you might call demigods or ascended masters. I met quite a few of them in my day. They never look over 23 years old. And the reason I'm allowed to share this um, is that it's time that mankind understands the truth, that we're not alone, we never have been alone, and never will be alone, and that God has provided for mankind to rise into a new estate, and that the long-prophesized age of light and love is dawning on the planet Earth. There are many other aspects to this, but I am going to focus on the physical relationship of extraterrestrials residing in the fourth and the fifth dimension. These are higher frequency realities that most people do not have access to. These beings lower their vibration to come to us and to serve with us. So be aware of that. So these two women, after Raymond went up in 2012, he was taken by the queen from this bar. He was... She said, oh, my God. He said, Dolores Berrios, how are you? And she came in and she said, hey, Cosmic Ray, because that's what the Venusians called them. How are you? He said, I'm fine. And he says, she says, I'm very hungry. And Raymond had always suspected from his meetings with her that she was a Venusian. But she said, I am famished. He ordered her a vegetarian pizza because he knew she was vegetarian. And she said, Raymond, I'm actually here in my etheric double. There's an other aspect of myself. I'm acting as a Brazilian translator at the Lopner rocket base. Um, 
let's take a walk and go back to your hotel. And on the way back to the hotel, she invited him. She said, or actually, I think it was at the bar. She said, would you like to go to an Ascension party? And he said, does that mean I'm going to Venus? <laughs> and she said, step on down, cause you're going to Venus. They went back to his hotel. She took him to his room. And the next day, uh, he awoken with great excitation that he was going to Venus. He didn't know how it would occur. She came and knocked on his door, and they went up to the roof. Now, the Venusians have a technology that's actually talked about in the Harry Potter series. It's called a Nimbus. It's a small little device. And I'm going to share with you that device in several instances here. This device is activated by the mental powers of the Venusian, who are pretty much adepts and advanced in their um, mental and spiritual development. And this Nimbus can be activated into a security device or a transportation device. And I'm going to share that with you in a minute. But first, I want to, I'm going to take you back to the Nimbus so you can actually see what this uh, Nimbus uh, looks like. So you see she's holding something in her hand here. Raymond Keller has a Nimbus too. I'm not going to reveal too much about that. But that Nimbus, he, is, he was given to pilot the craft. They were on the planet Venus. And she said, would you like to go into the past? And he said, yes. Where would you like to go? He said, I'd like to go back to 1954 when you met George Adamski. She said, no, that's too dangerous. So this is a close-up picture of the queen of, of Venus named Lady Orda. She was born in 1585. She was given to a nunnery by her parents in the year 1590, and she worked as a, as a slave for the nuns as a seamstress, cleaning, and um, she decided she had had enough, and her intention was to escape the nunnery at the age of 15, which she did. She stole a candlestick. She, made, she cut her hair and dressed like a boy and was escaping um, and she found herself in a hayloft one night, and she was visited by an angel, sparkling and, and a large angel, and he spoke to her. She was laying in the hayloft, and he said, he said the, the authorities were looking for her and that she should continue on her journey to Barcelona. And when she got there, she should only travel at night and take the southern route, which was longer, and she should... Um, go to a particular cardinal and that she should confess the visitation of her and say and tell him this. So what happened was she told this cardinal when she arrived, she said, listen, she took off her hat, admitted that she was a girl and confessed that she was visited by an angel and that her wish was to join her brother, who was a conquistador in Peru. The father said, I'm actually preparing to go to Peru in several years. I want you to uh, continue to dress as a boy. I want you to be trained, and you'll be part of my security force when we leave Barcelona. Um, I want you to learn the mace, the short sword, the long sword, and the joust. And that's what she did. And she managed all the way to make it to Peru. While she was there, it was discovered by uh, a fellow conquistador that she was a girl. He tried to rape her. She killed him with one strike of the sword sword into his heart ladies and gentlemen you are allowed to def to kill someone to defend your life or to protect the life of an innocent this is god's law she ran to the the church sanctuary with the military authorities hot on her heel they said we want that woman she's a liar and a murderer he said this is holy ground you stay here i'm writing a letter to my friend, the Pope. 
the Milerci said, I'm writing a letter to the Pope. The, the Pope sent back a letter and said, you give this woman first class treatment. You do not touch a hair on her head. If I hear she's been mistreated, there will be trouble. She came all the way to the Vatican and she confessed her visitation. The Pope believed her and wrote a papal scroll and she handed it and she was allowed to create her own, probably the first ever military police made of men and women that would protect the native natives in Peru against the overreaching uh, masculine conquistadors in their abuse of power uh, in the mission of allegedly spreading the message of Christ. At a certain point in time, Lady Orta realized she wasn't aging and she had to disappear from uh, the public view where she would disappear for some years and she would continue serving the various fathers in the Catholic Church as they came all the way up from South America and Peru, all the way up through Central America, all the way up through Mexico, and all the way up to not only San Juan Capistrano near Laguna Beach, where the, where the pigeons come, but to Santa Barbara. And finally, in the year 1830, she was down south of Mount Shasta here in a place called Solano, California. She was an invaluable help to all the fathers. She spoke all the languages of the Native Americans. And at this point in her life, she was 245 years old. She did not know why she had not been aging. She, of course, remembered the visitation of the angel. But she's had a long lifetime on earth. I can't imagine the travels and the knowledge that she had ascertained whether she traveled the world and her experiences throughout those many, many years of her life. Must be an incredible story. I hope to meet her one day and to that this story may be known to the world. So she was out and she saw a Russian fur trapper. She was on her horse and the Spanish wanted to know what the heck are the Russians doing there in California in 1830s? So she questioned him, and this Russian fur trapper had all kind of beaver pelts and all the accoutrements, no dead animals. So he started to tell her about this mountain behind me where I live in Mount Shasta. He said, you know, that's a very strange mountain. There have been stories of little fairies and people and lights in the sky. It's said that the gods live inside the mountain, and there's many things. And so her curiosity was very much peaked. She went back to the father, I believe it was Junipero Sierra, and she said, I need four pack mules, an extra horse. She loaded them up, and within 24 hours, she was headed to Mount Shasta. She came all the way up to this mountain, and she found herself somewhere on the mountain. I do not know where, but there was the same Russian fur trapper smiling. And then she recognized him. He transformed himself into the accidental apostle who appeared to her in the year 1685 at the age of 15 when she was running away. This was Lord Dismas, the ascended master El Moria, the regent of Venus, who advises the queens. He was appointed directly by Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ is known to us as Sunat Kumara. He was a Venusian master, ascended master, of over 24 million years. On Venus, their planet was originally from a planet called Norca and the Tau Ceti system, and they were losing their oxygen. There were four Kumara brothers born and they all ascended rapidly to the seventh dimension. Sunat Kamara has been with them since they shot their rocket ships to save their planet all the way to this solar system where they crash landed on Mars and two on Venus, and one of the ships missed. And so this is how the seeding of the solar system began from Tau Ceni 
a race called the Norcads. Now, the native population of Venus 25 million years ago was a very large bumblebee. And the women of Venus at that time, though third dimensional, were very advanced and telepathic. And they placed their left hand on the bees and they were allowed to petition the bees to live here. The life on Earth at that time was a small type of lemur and they did not want to interfere with the human evolution at that time. So they stayed on Venus at that time was a prehistoric planet, uh, as was Mars to a certain extent. Now, 18 million years ago, a group of Pleiadians and Aldebarans in a period known as the Syrian shift, where there are many genetic wars and irresponsible transhumanist agendas going on of beings who were looking at humans and bees and said, what a great farm worker race. We can conquer them. We can genetically alter the humans and they will be a food source and we will rule this world. This is how some of these Pleiadians and other beings uh, from Aldebaran were thinking at the time of these genetic wars a long, long time ago. Now, at a certain point in time, um, there was an asteroid that hit Venus and kicked up the dust. Now, the Aldebarans and the Pleiadians were using a technology which we know known as the Vril, P-H-Y-R-I-L-L -L or V-R-I-L, L. And this technology extends lifespans and uh, is very much involved in um, genetics. And so they had to abandon the planet uh, Venus at that time and um, but they had to leave their technology, but they had hybridized the humans and the bees. An amazing story. And I'm going to let you read Cosmic Ray's excellent adventure about the history of how they regained their genetics. But this is the long history of association from Venus. Now, Sunat Kumara has been incarnating on various worlds as a world teacher incarnating at various times to bring them into the spirit of cooperation and love and to help worlds in the third dimension evolve to the next level. There's a long history of the Earth's genetics I won't go into. I want to focus on the Venusian influence on the Earth. So I'm going to take you back. Those two women that you saw were sent to Raymond after he finished his second book. And now I'm going to share with you and continuing story of the Queen of Venus. This is the introduction to my contact with the Venusians. I have many other stories and experiences which I've told through the years, but it's time that you people hear the truth and understand the reality of my contact and the reality. Now, um, this is a gentleman named George Adamski. He was a psychic. He was born in 1952, he had a very unique experience. Sorry about that. Um, and he was uh, psychically guided to the first publicly acknowledged contact in the desert with a Venusian he called Orthon. Here is a picture that he described taking a picture of that woman I showed you. You notice her hair is similar. Um, in the first contact, Lady Orta was with the woman. The reason he told everyone that his name was Orthon should tell them I'm a man because it was felt that Earth society in 1950 knew, could, 52 could not handle a woman in a position of, of authority. So here she is with the universal translator. He also might have noticed that she speaks with a Spanish accent. Now, when she met that fur trapper in, 19, in 1830, on Mount Shasta, they dematerialized like the woman from India, and they went to Venus, and she became a dual citizen, serving on Earth and various safe houses and influencing high culture and society uh, throughout her, her life. Okay, so this is George Adamski. Let's fast forward to 1954 at Mount Palomar. These, she, again, note she's carrying a nimbus a small security vice, the same one that you saw with Raymond. Note her shoes are the same. <laughs> She's been wearing these shoes since 1954, and you saw these same shoes being worn with Raymond 
from our timeline of 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, you are going to be learning about time travel, in and out of time, the responsible use and spiritual use, and how they've been working to save the earth from the fallen Anunnaki and the fallen ones who have gained control of the earth. That's another story and another aspect of the teachings that I have been asked to share with humanity. This gentleman here with the glasses name is Ramu, and he is from Mars. The, the, the sunlight there makes his glasses look uh, different, but it's, it's a shadow. He was quite tall, and he appeared with this gentleman uh, named uh, Furcon. Now, um, the shadows that day in the sun. This picture was taken by a Brazilian UFO researcher who was visiting the other gentleman I spoke about that had the, the painting next to him of this woman here who contacted him in 1952. There was a cigar-shaped mothership above. There were two scout craft hovering in the air above, and on the ground was one scout craft with one man inside and another man on the outside, while this little woman, uh, about five foot four, uh, wearing size six shoes in a silver spacesuit, spoke with him through a universal translator. They did this to determine if his heart was good. And after that, she was meeting with him regularly and she was coming to his, his talk to support his message. Because they came late, some people were um, sus suspicious. She kind of looks like that picture. Is that them? He's very tall. What are they doing here? And they started to question her. And she said, she said, and the reality was that she was working as a seamstress in Hermosa Beach. And the people uh, said, well, who are these guys with you? They said, well, they're my roommates. Well, in 1954, you didn't have roommates. She could read the people's minds. They were thinking, oh, this is a weird sex cult. Who are these people? And the people started to get agitated and started to uh, follow them. George Adamski you know, tried to get their attention. And at the end of his talk, uh, they went outside. The Brazilian photographer took these pictures of them and they uh, people were surrounding them. And so they had to escape. They literally ran down a hill into a eucalyptus grove, literally with eight or 10 people following them down the hill. The queen activated this device they dematerialized and became invisible, and the people were driven back by a swarm of bees. Ladies and gentlemen, I swear to God, this is the reality. I can't make this up. So anyone who thinks they're going to catch a Venusian, it's not going to happen. I'll be explaining about Valiant Thor later on. I have also met Valiant Thor. So this is an introduction to my personal experience. Now, there's another picture that Raymond Keller, when he got caught in a time travel mishap, and I think I'll save that for another one, but that is this picture here. Um, this picture is from 1954 that Raymond ba brought back with him when he was taken back to Venus in, a, in 2013. They were, uh, she wanted to look at, to show him Earth in a time travel, but she made a mistake and she'd forgotten that there were radiation experiments. And they were in a bilocation signal on Venus projecting into the past of the Earth. And the tachyon drive of this ship was disrupted and broke the signal and they crash landed in the Earth in 1952. Now, this is a picture of him with her in 1972. He took out the background because they were on a military base. Raymond served in the military. And you see here, she's young, he's old. And here we see them in 2013. And um, when they crash landed. Now, this picture was taken by two people out in the desert who were camping near the Giant Rock uh, Convention, much like my convention in Mount Shasta. Now, they took this picture at when they floated to the ground. And they floated to the ground because this device started to break up. They were above observing unbeknownst to the public and this device broke up. 
and I'm going to share with you what happened. So this picture was not in our timeline. I, I want to explain that um, this picture was taken at the first Giant Rock Space Convention in 1954. This was the Nimbus crash incident. And here are people at the UFO convention expecting a UFO, and now this takes place. This did not happen in the first timeline of 1954. This took place in 2013 when the Queen of Venus was sharing with Raymond to go back into the past. This is a very mind-blowing reality that, that those who have will stop ridiculing and, and want to investigate the truth of the infinite potential of the creator and the universe and the mysteries of life that we are only beginning to, to understand. But I'm here and Raymond's here and many other contactees uh, much higher in advance than me, probably none more advanced than Raymond. But those individuals who've had real experiences, who've remained silent or worked silently behind the scenes to help people in their gnosis of the truth are about to get come forward. There's tremendous information. We cannot wait any longer for the governments. You think of the UFO disclosure movement that people talk about and the deep state and all of that nonsense. We've been calling them UFOs since the 40s. The extraterrestrials and Venusians like, don't call them UFOs, they call them spaceships. After 70 years, they now call them UAPs. They will never stop lying. So this spaceship crashed, it broke up and they landed on the desert floor in a uh, giant rock um, here. Now the people that took this image, the ship started to, to crack and Raymond, she said, uh oh, take it up to 2000 feet. He had taken it down to 1000 feet. She said, uh oh, take it back up to 2000. He said, why? She said, quickly, take your Nimbus out of the, the console and take my hand. And as they did that, the canopy broke and the, the, they were at about 1500 feet or a thousand feet and the ship fell down to the ground. They gently descended like Superman on the ground and the queen was holding his hand and she let him go. And that picture that you saw was taken just after they landed. And the, the two faithful people, the couple that took this picture Powell and Dixie Garrett were from Paradise, California. And this picture, they said, we knew you'd come. And when you get the book on my website or buy all of them, he's got a lot of books on my website, thepromisereveal.net. Uh, they said, what's your name? Now get this, Raymond has a great sense of humor. He said, I'm Corel. Now, Supergirl had not been invented yet. But Corel was Superman's uncle, the father of Supergirl. And this is a very strange story because Raymond had every copy of Supergirl. Guess who the people gave that image to? They gave that image to Otto Binder, the creator of Supergirl. It's absolutely incredible. And I can't make this up. I don't know the answers. And you can deny it all you want. But as time moves forward and the extraterrestrials come forward to present themselves, if I'm still alive, I definitely will be part of this disclosure. I'm available to speak anywhere in the world. I don't require a lot of money like some people. I do require my transportation, my food, and everything and uh, to get there. But I will share this information, as will Dr. Raymond Keller. We've been to China, I've been to Australia, I've been to Japan, I've been to Austria, I've been to Bolivia, I've been to Peru, I've been to England. I've been sharing this message around the world. I've been to Canada throughout my life, sharing the truth and the reality of my contact. So what I'm going to play for you in the next video that I'm going to share is very deep and profound. I'm going to share a few more images and then I'm going to say goodbye, and I'll be sharing more information on my history and contact in the future. I'm going to briefly share some information about Valiant Thor now. So I'm going to go here. We're going to see the crash. And now we're going to go to uh, 
the your there, friend. There's a message here. I'm not going to play this, but I'm going to go on to the next. The your friend. There, there, the next one. Raymond and I went to uh, China, and Valiant Thor wrote this message. We were we were accosted by the police and the beautiful people of China who bought us there, were put in jail and fined. Raymond and I spent 24 hours in a, in a Chinese silence group. I knew that we were protected because we were there at the behest of the Venusians. Actions were taken and we were released immediately within 12 hours. Unfortunately, the kind people that supported us were fined and separated, and it was a traumatic experience. Valiant Thor gave this rose gold image of the rose of venus to one of the chinese workers and um, for those who read mandarin you can see what it said this is signed by valiant thor in the month of june 10th 2019 and we forwarded this to the wonderful people of china now i this is valiant thor and i was given all these images by dr frank stranges who met valiant thor at the pentagon this picture was taken by Augie Roberts, an Air Force photographer. I know the story of Valiant Thor well. I met him in 2003. I met the other gentleman. So they're here. They've always been here. And Valiant Thor heads the mission of the Venusians on the Earth. And the gentleman who took the video, which you're going to see in my next uh, revelation, uh, he gave me this book. That's why I call my book my friends from Venus. This is a, a, a first book by Dr. Frank Stranges called My Friend from Beyond Earth. Valiant Thor sent this um, copy to me after we were arrested in China. I have dialogues with Valiant Thor. I met him in 2003. I'm allowed to ask questions and I speak to other members of the Venusian. Uh, they call themselves the Angel Force. Higher dimensional beings with long lives. We'll be talking about their technology. This is a friend of mine from Venus. I invited to my conference in 2013. She was born on Venus and she's showing her hand as a flame. See how the fingers point to the top? She was born in the fifth dimension of Venus. She was 147 years old when she was asked by the masters to lower her vibration and to live a life on earth in as a as a physical human she's quite small and uh she is now 220 something years old she came here uh, at the age of 147 and she inserted herself into earth life in 1950 after living two years in tibet where she acclimatized and she replaced the lifetime of a girl who she was living uh, as a twin with during the French Revolution. Uh, Olmec was an important woman in the French Revolution and leading the people in the revolution. And her sister, uh, when the authorities came for her, she said, I am her, and her head was chopped off. And so Olmec owned her a great debt. And in this lifetime, she hovered around her before her birth. And when she died in a bus accident, Olmec replaced her. This is George Hunt Williamson, and this is the moon base commander that I met. Please note her stocky legs, her arms, and she was at uh, a booth at the, one of the giant rock conventions in 1954 from a woman who was taken to Venus and had a family. And uh, the gentleman that took this photographer was a lawyer from New York. She was there at the booth. She noticed him and she said, came over to him and said, I am from Venus. This is Lady Commander Aurora Rains. I can share this photo of her. And for those of you who know the X-Files, on, on the right is the one we know as Frank Scully. And on the left is the first metaphysical uh, radio host who Art Bell filled the shoes for his name is long john neville and he was working with some other contactees of the 40s and the first contact a guy named howard menger who was a friend of mine so i'm gonna uh exit this now i'm gonna go down that's a picture of her um and her red beret again she was the one who met um eisenhower on the tarmac at murak air force in 1954 and told him 
as they had told all the world governments to stop the use of nuclear experiments or they would precipitate an axial flip. Now, there's a pr private communication I will share later. Uh, so there's a lot of information in here that you can see in other of my things. Um, and this is the transcript of, of the message. And um, I think there's, uh, I have some, I'm going to have to exit this for a moment, make sure I can't reveal her image on this particular video, but I'm going to um, share with you some pictures of Valiant Thor, who I have met. So I'm going to share the images of Valiant Thor here. Um, um, and I met all three of these uh, Venusians um, throughout my life. And I'll share that information. And this is going to end the, the presentation of my um, of my current uh, introduction to the first ever interview. And that interview will stand alone. I will disable comments so that this messages can be heard in their pure form. I'm not going to be able to show the video. If you come to my Mount Shasta Summer Conference, I'm allowed to share the videos. I'm allowed to share a Valiant Thor's voice recorded message. But at this point in time, I'm unable to share these messages until humanity reaches a level of understanding and is not so triggered. We have a long way to go, folks. For those people who think we're ascending to the fifth dimension, it's not happening. Individuals can ascend at any time. As I told you about these women who were taken and ascended, many other men and women have ascended to Venus. Many people, even drunks on the street who die in a trash can of cold could ascend to a higher dimension. No one knows what someone's lifetime mission is, but I can tell you that's not what we think. So I'm going to share with you image of Valiant Thor, and I'll share with uh, these particular individuals that I met. Um, so this is a picture taken in 1957, two weeks before my birthday. And this is the Venusian commander Valiant Thor. I met him in 2003. This is the vice commander, Don. Valiant Thor was not born on Venus. He's a created being. He can't die. He appeared on Venus one day. Don Thor and his family adopted Valiant Thor. I don't know the time, but I'm guessing it's well over 2,000 years ago. This woman I met in Las Vegas at Dr. Frank Strange's meeting. Now, this man, Don Thor, has appeared to me at various points in my life. I only recognized him once when I was in... Um, I was in... Uh, uh, being trained by the same guy that Raymond had met, Gabriel Green from Giant Rock. And I asked him what they wear, and he, he said they love the 50s. So he showed up in a mint condition 57 Chevy with three beautiful Venusians in the back, dressed in black, brown and white saddle shoes, and a mint condition 57 blue and white convertible Chevy with the top down. They were sitting on the back of the 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 car, not in the seats. They all had white blouses um, and I'll say plaid mini skirts and white knee socks. They all had white hair, pigtails, ponytails, and they danced. They came out and skipped to the store with the energy and the vitality and the love and the joy of 12-year-old girls. He got out. A gentleman stayed in the car who was the driver. Don got out wearing um as i was walking up the ramp he was getting out of the car i kept watching him he was wearing a white t-shirt like the 50s and he was wearing uh uh jeans cuff rolled up pennies with a penny loafer and as i got to the counter of the tiktok he got there before me and he said i'll have a pack of cigarettes i looked this gentleman in the eye and i telepathically said go ahead and and smoke i know you guys don't smoke he kind of smiled and said, I'll have a pack of matches. Keep in mind, folks, this is in 1979 or 80, 81, maybe. And um, I was with a guy who didn't recognize him. These girls were going through the store. I wasn't looking at them. I was looking at him. He was right next to me, and I recognized him. 
it was right after I had spent about an hour and a half with this teacher who was telling me what they used to look like and wear. And he said they loved the 50s. So they made a very concerted effort, bought the spaceship down in the desert, landed it. And these guys got out and did a display for me. And my first contact, they did not acknowledge me. They did not call me by name. It was a telepathic encounter where my hair was on end. And it was complimenting many of my other contacts with the Pleiadians, which I'll share at another time. So they got back in the car. Uh, oh, and then he, when he got there, he started pounding the camels on the counter. So so it's pretty amazing. You can imagine this Venusian pounding the things on camera. And I'm looking at him like, go ahead, smoke it. I know you guys don't smoke, right? And so he says, I'll pack of cigarettes and, and then wait for it, folks. He goes, I'll have a pack. Of, he says, okay, he gets the cigarettes and he looks at me. He takes the cigarettes and the matches and he rolls it into his shirt sleeve like Fonzie. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about my encounter with Valiant Thor and his lovely wife, Jill, and another one. So this is this is my announcement to the world. Sorry, my glasses are a little wonky here, but um, I am a real face-to-face -face contactee, and they've asked me to. I was asked by the big boy upstairs. Um, there's some other things I'm going to share in my next message that will make sense to many of you who are looking for the truth and how we're going to transition here. There's a multi-pronged attack by the Galactic Confederation of Light to bring the truth to the people very quickly. And this is a spiritual message. This is not about a takeover. This is not about silver spacesuits. This is about a reorientation of the individual consciousness and returning to the covenant and the laws of the creator. We have been lied to. We've been hoodwinked, and we have traitors on the earth who have corrupted us. This is coming down. They're no longer going to be able to do the bad thing. Okay. So have faith in God. Um, God bless you all. And I apologize if this information is a lot to digest, but believe me, I've been digesting it on my own since I was eight years old. And when my physical contacts began about 1979, I was meeting a female cosmonaut named Samyasi. We'll go into that next time. So ladies and gentlemen, this is post number two of three. And the next one is simply going to be the Venusian messages. I'll simply play them and you'll listen to them. And I'll play some other images of spaceships and UFOs while this 28 message, 28 minute message begins. Thank you very much for listening to me today. And I appreciate your time. And I hope that this information will find a place in your heart. For you Christians, I suggest you look at my website, thepromiserevealed.net, and you can read an introduction to the Gospel of Thomas that the Venusians have given to us through Dr. Raymond Keller, who was able to look into what the Christians call the Book of Life and what the Mormons call the Akashic, what we call the Akashic Records. He was given the technology that was used by Joseph Smith of the Mormon religion called the Urim and the Thuman Stone. It was also used uh, on the breastplate of Aaron, G, uh, Moses' brother, with the Ark of the Covenant to be guided in their, uh, let's call it their long journey across the desert. God bless you all. Um, victory to the light. And I thank you. And I hope you will enjoy my messages from the Ministry of Angels. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you all.